Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Tonight, the defenders have a video of Jewel Jones, a state rep, being booked in the jail and bringing up the governor every chance he gets. For the first time, lawmakers and Michiganders are hearing from former director of the health department, Robert Gordon, coming up what he had to say today about his controversial resignation. Governor Whitmer reveals what she's calling a challenge to get more Michiganders vaccinated with each step bringing more of a return to normalcy. And that tops tonight's News at 6. Good to have you with us. The system of rewards being put forth by the governor with hard numbers to the lifting of COVID restrictions. Reaction is coming in from various groups, but let's start with what's in the plan. Right now, just under 50% of Michiganders have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. Once that number hits 55%, in-person work would be allowed in all sectors of business. At 60%, indoor capacity would go up to 25% at sports stadiums and other venues, including banquet halls and funeral homes. 50% capacity would be allowed at gyms, and the curfew on restaurants and bars would be lifted. If we hit 65%, all indoor percentage capacity limits then would be lifted, though social distancing would still be required. There would be a further relaxing of limits on social gatherings. And then at 70%, the mask mandate would be lifted. And the health department would no longer employ these broad mitigation measures, barring any unanticipated circumstances. Governor said today she sees this as a chance for people in Michigan to unite around a common goal. We may be one of the first that really has put together a, a plan of this nature, and we're proud of this work. We think that it really is the kind of goal and hope that we need, um, and it's an opportunity for us to all join arms and to make sure that we get to this goal. Now, um, it is dependent on people, though, of course, just like everything the last 15 months. It's dependent on Michiganders uh, take, availing themselves of this, these incredibly important vaccines. With Governor Whitmer linking the state's reopening to these vaccine rates, experts say it's a pretty welcome sign. University of Michigan Chief Medical Officer and Infectious Disease Physician Dr. Preeti Malani believes vaccination are the right answer to move the state back to normalcy. I'm really excited about what I, what I see. Getting back has been a lot harder, and to me, the governor's plan really accounts for some of that difficulty in getting back, and getting back is much more of a dial. It's not a switch. The governor is now looking toward this summer as being the kind we all remember from years ago. There is mixed reaction about the governor's announcement today from others. Rod Maloney live tonight with a look at businesses adjusting to this ever changing climate. Rod. Yeah, you know, Devin, a lot of businesses have been asking for some sort of certitude going forward. So a lot of business groups are happy about this tonight. But I can tell you, we talked to one industry where people are saying there is optimism looking forward, but there's a lot of misery based on what has been. We can all throw some burgers on the grill, catch a Tigers game and hit the lake with our friends. We can enjoy our Michigan summer. The governor's optimism shared by Will Power Fitness Group owner William McRae. I'm happy, um, I'm ecstatic, and I think we're moving in the right direction. Will tells Local 4 his gym, which offers personal training, kickboxing, regular boxing and the like, has taken a beating throughout this pandemic, making costly adjustments and learning to do fitness classes 100% online. Still, there, there are some good news there. Um, I think that uh, that was the right decision today to um, allow us to open from uh, uh, open to 50 percent capacity, which is, you know, it's going to help out a lot of people. Um, a lot of gym owners who have uh, suffered, you know, for months and months. The suffering part is all Michigan Fitness Club Association vice chair and co-founder Burn Fitness, Alyssa Tushman, tells Local 4. I can tell you as a local business owner, we are in big trouble. She says her gym and many others like hers have suffered irreparable harm, operating at occupancy rates below restaurants. And now she's going to have to have a lawyer ready to file bankruptcy this week because of COVID shutdowns. We have followed MIOSHA's guidelines to a T. We shut down for six months. We wear face coverings. We do everything right and have been rewarded with bankruptcy. Obviously, she's very upset. Now, speaking of the Tigers from the governor, we did give them a ring and we didn't hear back. And we also put in about calls to about two dozen wedding uh, locations around uh, southeastern Michigan. And you get the impression that they're all a little busy planning 
for what could be coming this summer. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod, now restaurants are waiting for the state to hit that 65% vaccine rate to fully reopen. The Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association has been at odds with the governor in the past over COVID restrictions, but today the president and CEO told us his group has been working with the governor's office and is happy with this new plan. I'm actually appreciative that there's more carrot and less stick, right? That this is a, an opportunity that says there are great things ahead of you. You need to do your part to make a better society, a better environment, a safer environment for all of us. Well, today, the state's top medical executive, Dr. Janae Caldoun, said cases and hospitalizations are going down in Michigan. The state is reporting 3,623 new cases in the last 24 hours. We lost 109 more lives to the virus, including 78 from a review of vinyl records. Dr. Janae Caldoun gave Governor Whitmer her second dose of the vaccine today. The governor receiving her second Pfizer shot at Devo DeVos Place over in Grand Rapids. She was joined by six teenagers who are working to convince their peers to get vaccinated. All right, a soggy Thursday around much of the area today. Uh, should change pretty soon though, right, Ben? We're uh, almost done with the widespread stuff, guys, and just a couple sprinkles left tonight, and that's all she wrote uh, for the rainfall, at least in the short term. I think a lot of us wish we could have gotten more out of it while we <laughs> essentially wasted our Thursday, uh, but those totals were uh, pretty few and far between, and we'll check those out coming up. The one thing we're not going to get is that late push of sunshine that we've gotten used to in the last couple of days. Looks like those clouds still hanging tough. There is some clearing on the west side of the state, but it's probably not going to get here in time to really affect our afternoon highs. So we're on either side of 50 degrees outside right now compared to near 80 in spots yesterday. And so this is a dramatic cool down. You can see for the rest of the evening, we'll see uh, temperatures go down to the mid 40s by midnight tonight. We've got a couple cool mornings ahead of us. Uh, really, Saturday morning will be the coldest. We'll look at that in your four zone forecast. And we've got a mess of rain coming next week, which we could use because the new drought monitor came out and it is not good. We'll take a look at that coming up. Local Forecasters app is the place to catch the 10 day forecast. You can get a head start on all that rain next week. It is free in your app store by searching WDIV. Guys. Ben, thank you. Another new twist today in the Jewel Jones arrest saga. New video shows the state rep being booked on charges, including drunk driving and resisting arrest. And he made sure to mention his powerful friends in state government, just as we saw in previously released dash cam video of the arrest itself. Local 4 defender Sean Lay takes us through the video showing how it all went down inside the Livingston County Jail. You've likely seen the video of Jewel Jones bringing up Governor Whitmer as he was being arrested along I-96. Now, video inside the Livingston County Jail. Watch this. Jones brings up the governor every chance he gets. See, I can't wait to show this to the, to the governor. Show, you want to show it to her. If you can't right. find me, where's codify? Where it says I have to wear a mask, I'm not going to stand over there. Listen. I'll stand over there and let you all hold my arms. But I won't stand over there by myself. Democratic State Representative Jewel Jones refusing just about every command he's given. His officers try to book him into the Livingston County Jail April 6th. Jones brings up Governor Gretchen Whitmer every chance he gets, arguing about even taking a mugshot. Believe me, the governor knows about this right now. They know about this. Yeah. And everything is being recorded? You called Gretchen. No, Gretchen called us, bud. She called you? Yeah, so you better start complying before Gretchen finds out, bud. You know what? Big Gretchen is the homie. Okay. If she finds out about this, she might be a little upset about the treatment. Throughout the process, the officers are patient with Jones until they've had it with Jones as he continues to argue and then gets loud with those officers. State law or this? local law. Or we can throw you back in the cell and then we can cool. just wait it out. I don't want right, to. Come on. This is our This is our Thanks. We're done playing nice with you, bud. I appreciate it. Jones attorney, he tells us they are moving forward with the case and their assertion that police used excessive force on the state rep. Sean Lay, local Ford defenders. And the charges Jones is facing, resisting arrest, operating while intoxicated, reckless driving, and possession of a weapon while under the influence of alcohol. Been a lot of questions surrounding the sudden resignation of State Health Director Robert Gordon back in January. Well, today he revealed a bit more about what happened as he testified before the State House. Grant Herms live with what we learned today. Grant. Well, the House Oversight Committee had tried a number of times to get Gordon to testify voluntarily, but today he was here after be giving a subpoena. Now, while he didn't reveal much in his testimony, Republicans are still considering it a victory, calling the hearing today a bombshell.
For the first time, lawmakers and Michiganders hearing from former Health Department Director Robert Gordon about his abrupt resignation and $155,000 severance deal that came with a now lifted confidentiality agreement. Gordon detailing the day he resigned, saying he was called to a meeting with the governor's staff, Governor Whitmer attending via video. When I arrived, I saw the governor and members of her staff. And the governor said to me, Robert, grateful for your service. I think it's time to go in a new direction. Gordon's deal has been described by Whitmer's opponents as hush money or a sweetheart deal. One member of the committee today calling Gordon suspicious. But there was a new line of thinking from Republicans. What started as claims of hush money when the deal was discovered has shifted to questioning whether the deal described by the governor as routine may have broken the law. Sounds like either you violated the Constitution or the administration did, or you did in fact have legal claims against the state, which you say you don't. Does that sound correct to you? No, sir, it doesn't. Democrats shooting back that question was better left to the courts. It might be most productive if we actually let the judicial branch answer the question you've raised. Despite the back and forth, Gordon saying his time as director was an honor. I was honest. I was candid. I was willing to, to, to I was willing, I, I always tried to do the right thing. I always tried to do the right thing. Now, it's unclear whether any laws were actually broken in that severance agreement, but it's worth noting that in the legislature on both sides of the aisle, those agreements have been used before, and they've totaled up to, at least in the past five years, according to one analysis, about a million dollars. Devin? And uh, what are we hearing about the governor uh, and her response to the testimony today, Grant? Well, this is new actually from four o'clock. We didn't have a real statement from her in just the last couple hours here. Her office said that Gordon and his team were important factors in the COVID-19 response. They saying that they undoubtedly saved lives, but they didn't say anything about the severance package, nor those claims from Republicans in the hearing today. Back to you. All right, Grant. Ahead, three people accused of terrorizing a Walled Lake family go before a judge to face charges. We'll show you what happened. Also, a family's grief is, well, tripled as a mother and son are killed on their way to another loved one's funeral. We'll have that next. I got vaccinated because I wanted to hang out with my friends again. I think it's really important to keep my family safe. To keep myself and my teammates safe so that we can get back to working out safely. One more step to getting rid of this pandemic altogether. I was lucky enough to get my second dosage of the COVID vaccine. To build up that herd immunity. I got vaccinated to protect my family, friends, and myself. So I want to do my part as a citizen of my community. I got vaccinated. Please get the vaccine facts at clickondetroit.com.